The kill command. The kill command can be used to terminate running processes and daemons. Used in combination with the ps command, it can eliminate rogue processes that cannot be stopped on a Linux system otherwise. There are 64 different kill signals that can be sent. You may list them all by typing kill with the dash L option. The five most common kill signals are 1, which stops and restarts the process with the same PID, 2, which is the weakest kill and interrupts the process. When we do control C to break a process running from the console, that's kill signal 2. 3 kills and core dumps memory to a file. 9 is the absolute kill. It's the strongest kill and it forces a uh, stop by sending the process to device null. And then there's 15 which is the default kill. So if you type kill and don't specify an option, that's the kill you get. Typically when killing a process, you will use the ps command and pipe its output to the grep command to find the process ID or PID of the program or daemon you wish to kill. For example, if I type ps aux and pipe it to grep and look for gedit, this would find the PID for all instances of gedit running on the Linux system. Let's say that it's 1099. You would then take the PID you gleaned from the previous command and pass it to the kill command to stop that particular process. For example, kill 1099. After the ps command for listing processes, one of the next important commands would be the kill command for stopping processes. Um, there are, you know, basically 64 different signals that the kill command can send to a process. And if I wanted to, I could list it. So if I just use kill um, dash L, this would list the 64 different processes here. And I'm only going to go over like maybe the five most common ones. Um, but if I did, I, I could just use a dash and pass that number in. In this case, for the one that you know that I wanted to access the particular kill command. But first one would be one, right? Sig hub here. And it stops and restarts the process with the same ID. So if there was a certain daemon or you know a program that I needed to run under a certain PID and not get a new PID, I could use that signal level. Um, the next one is two, okay, and sig int. And that's the weakest kill, it just interrupts the process, and that's equivalent to pressing like control C. So in other words, if I launch a new terminal over here, and let me zoom in a bit. And I'm just going to flood ping Yahoo in this case. And I'm flood pinging Yahoo here with no, you know, I haven't su supplied the number of pings to. So if I do control C to stop the process, which is you know something that we commonly do, that's the same thing as sending, uh, you know, kill with the signal level of two. You go ahead and exit out of that prompt there. Okay, so there's one and there's two. Um, the next you know, a third most common one would be three. In this case, sig quit. And if I do that, that signal not only will kill the process, but it, you know, causes a core dump. So it'll take that process information that's in memory and it'll write it to a file called core. And that's just useful for, you know, debugging purposes, trying to figure out what's going on. And, and there's also a shortcut combination with that, um, control and the backward slash. Um, the next one, you know, the most common of all probably would be 15, sig term. And this is the default. When I use the kill command and I don't specify a signal with the dash, then I'm really usually just, you know, passing in the signal 15, sig term to terminate the process. Sort of the default kill. And then the strongest kill, I guess, would be 9, sig kill here. And that's, that's sometimes called the absolute kill. It forces a stop by sending process, you know, a process and its resources to um, on basically a null device file, so forward slash dev forward slash null. So just some of the more common kill processes, but we're we're just going to basically do the default, and in this case, um, 15 just by using the kill command. So we did kill l to list, um, and to just to illustrate some of the things we can do with the kill command, as we couple it with the process command, I'm going to launch a process. I'm going to do alt f2, and I'm going to do g edit. All right, so I launch 1G edit. If I did that, let me look for the process. So PS AUX, I could do this, but again, that's a bit overwhelming. I mean, yeah, I could scroll through this and try to look for G edit and find my, my text editor in, in that way, but that's a bit overwhelming. So, you know, again, why not use the grep command? So PS AUX, um, you know, grep just searches for a string. So I'm going to grep and I want to figure out what process happens to be, you know, employed or being used there. So remember the columns in this case, the user ID, and this is my process ID. So knowing the ID of the process, now I can kill it. 
And depending on the permission and who you're logged in as, you may or may not have to use sudo. Right now, I'm just going to do kill and 3192, which is the process ID, and watch what happens to the gedit window. It disappears. So I just killed that process. And where I to grep for it again, it's gone. I mean, yeah, there's a process here, but that's just what I'm, you know, me grepping, running the ps command and grepping for gedit. Um, but, you know, this process here where it was actually running, it's gone. Um, so that's one way to kill things by process ID. The kill all command. There is also a kill all command. It is like using grep. It will locate and kill all processes running with the name you specify without requiring the PID. For example, if I typed kill all gedit, it would go and find all the processes that were running under the name gedit and kill them regardless of their process ID. That's the basic kill command, but let's say I had multiple processes and I wanted to kill them all at the same time then that might be a good candidate to use the kill all command. To do that, I'm going to launch one process that's not as root, gedit, and I'm going to launch another process. You won't see it, but it will open up in the background, not as root, gedit. And I'm going to launch a third process. In this case, I'm going to use gksudo if I wanted to write outside my home folder or gain write privileges, gedit. Okay, and you know, cache my password for like 15 minutes or so, but had I not, I'd have to type in my password if I had not typed it in within 15 minutes. So have all these processes here running grep, and if I do that, let's use the process command. So PSAUX, and I'm going to grep for gedit. And notice you'll see each instance, here are the two instances I launched where I was not root, and here's the third one where I launched, you know, launched it as root. And I've got the PID, so I could use the kill command and kill each one of those. Um, the exception being this one because I use gksudo, which means that's running under root privileges, temporary root privileges with the you know the sudo command. So I'd have to use sudo kill to kill that. Whereas these two here, I could just use kill by itself without having to use sudo. But um, I could do that. You know, I could do sudo and kill, and I could type in the process ID here, here 3252. Then I could do it again 3257 and do it again 3258. Or I could simply use the kill all command. And that way, if I pass in gedit, watch what happens. When I hit enter, it'll kill all of these processes all at once. Okay? And if I hit the up arrow and grep it to do a search, notice that all of these processes are gone now. Killed them all. So it's just an example of using kill and the kill all command, along with the process command and grep, to manage and control different processes in Linux.